Okay, so this is a beginning video for working with exponent expressions with variable bases. So if you think you're pretty good with doing exponents, you might want to go right to um, the mastery level. This is the very most basic video for how to do simplifying exponents. All right, so we're going to start with our laws. Anything to the 0 power is 1. So x to the 0 is 1. Anything to the 0 is going to be 1. Um, our negative exponents are flippers. If you have a to the negative 1, you can write that as 1 over a. If you have a to the negative n, it's 1 over a to the n. And if you have something like, um, yeah, well, this one right here, a over b to the negative 1, you can have b over a. And you basically you flip. So if I have 1 over a to the negative 1, that becomes, if you think about flipping, it's going to become a to the 1. So that kind of idea is with our negative exponents. You think of them as flipping. Um, and then we have our roots, or our fraction exponents, we think of as roots. And the root, I like to say, if you think of it like a tree, the roots go underground. So the root is the thing in the bottom of the fraction, right? And that's always the number in there. This thing right here is a square root, but anytime you put a number in there, that's a different kind of root. This right here is not a square root. This is what we call a cube root. So if I had this, that's the same as x to the one-third. Okay, so you want to think about roots being that way, and roots being on the bottom. And if I have this in there, that's going to turn this one-third into a two-thirds, because I have x squared. You can think of this as x squared to the one-third. And from our raising a power to a power, we multiply our powers, x to the two-thirds. So give that kind of idea going on. Um, and then we have our laws of exponents. Same base, multiply together, you add your exponents. Power to a power, we multiply our exponents. And one on top of the other, we subtract our exponents. So those are the laws. These are also laws. You can distribute your thing in, but it only works over multiplying. If I have a plus b to the m, that does not equal a to the m plus b to the m. A quick example would be 2 plus 3 squared. Well, we know that really is 5 squared or 25. But if I do 2 squared plus 3 squared, 4 plus 9, not the same as 25. Um, so you have to be careful with distributing those exponents. It only works over multiplying or dividing. All right, so let's do a couple problems. So here's x squared times x to the fifth. Really what we have going on is you have x times x and another x times x times x times x times x. Right, here's my x squared. Here's my x to the fifth. And so we end up with x to the seventh, which is the same as x to the two plus five, adding our exponents. That's why that works. Um, if I think about one like this, I have x cubed, and then I have x squared to the fourth. So I have x squared, and another x squared, and another x squared, and another x squared, because that's what it means to be to the fourth power. You take that thing multiplied by itself four times. And when I'm all done, this becomes here. I have x using the last property. I add these exponents, 2, 4, 6, 8. So this is x to the eighth. And I started with x cubed. And then I get a fine grand answer of x to the eleventh. And the x to the eighth, you can see, comes from multiplying two times four. It is not the same. I don't take the 2 to the 4th power. I multiply my powers. Because I'm doing a squared basically four times. If you think about this in here, I have an x squared times another x squared. And then you add those powers. OK? Um, so this right here, you can think of this as being 2r squared times 2r squared times 2 r squared. And we are going to get 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. r squared times r squared times r squared is going to be r to the 6. Or in other words, you can distribute that 3. Right? This is the same as 2 cubed times r squared cubed 
And again, the power to a power, you multiply your powers, and that's going to give me my 6. Um, the one thing people often forget is when you have these set of parentheses, I see a lot of this. People will say, well, this is 2r to the 6th. Not true. You have to take both the 2 and the r squared and raise them to the third power. Let's get a little bit trickier. So here we have some parentheses. We have all sorts of things going on. But there's not adding, so really the parentheses don't matter. And we just multiply the things that are alike. So 3 times 2 is going to give me 6. x squared times x is going to give me x to the third. And y to the fifth times y cubed is going to give me y to the eighth. Right? Because really you can change the order. You can group. You can say this is the same as 3 times 2 times x squared times x times y to the fifth, times y cubed. Associative property and um, commutative property of multiplication allow us to do those moving around and ungrouping. OK. So here we have 2x to the third over x to the seventh. Now the rule says, so I'm going to have that 2, but the rule says I can take this as x to the 3 minus 7. Right, you multiply, you add the, or you take the top power, subtract the bottom power, which is the same as 2x to the negative 4. And we do not want to have any exponents that are negative when we're done. So that's going to turn into 2 over x to the 4th. Um, the other way you can think about this is you don't necessarily have to use this rule, but 2x cubed is 2xxx. And on the bottom, I have x to the 7th. So I have these three, and then I have four more. These are going to cancel, these are going to cancel, these are going to cancel, and there's my same answer as what I had over there, which is 2 divided by x to the 4th. When you're doing these, you can always think about which power is bigger, the 3 or the 7. Since the 7 is bigger, and that's in the bottom, I'm going to end up with x's in the bottom, because that's where I have more of them when I'm done canceling. All right, so again, Multiplying to the fourth power, our, our rule says we can just bring that power in, right? And this becomes c to the fourth over d squared to the fourth, which is c to the fourth. And again, when I have a power raised to another power, I multiply my powers, and I get this, which you would also get if you thought of doing c over d squared times c over d squared times c over d squared times c over d squared. Right on top, I have 1, 2, 3, 4 c's multiplied together, which is not 4c, it's c to the fourth power. And I have d squared times d squared times d squared, and I add up my 1, 2, 3, I have 4 2's added up. So 4 times 2, again, 4 times 2 gives me my 8. All right, so that's sort of the very basic. Um, I haven't really dealt much with negative exponents or with fraction exponents. Uh, for those things, you want to see the next video, which is the um, exponents with variable basis for mastery video. So good luck.